everyone. Welcome to Love at First Laugh, the Green Room Edition. Today, I am super excited because I have an amazing guest. I've known him for a long time. He has been on True TV and Comedy Central, and he has a book that I read and I absolutely loved called The Art of Being Yay. Please welcome to Love at First Laugh, Aiden Park. Hi. Whoa, Aiden. hi. How hey, are Grace. you? <laughs> hi. How are you? Are we gonna pretend like we were not talking for like 15 minutes before this whole thing started? Starting <laughs> my my dating horror story. We're not gonna. <laughs> uh, oh, we're not gonna talk about. It. Okay, we're not talking about that. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm so seeing you. How you doing? Oh. Yes. oh my god, it's been so long. <laughs> I know, I know. This is gonna be a great show. We both have like high energy, so we feed yeah. each other. <laughs> well, I met you at um. You know where I met you? I met you at a. Uh, the show in Long Beach, uh, in like six years ago. Um, oh. It was like the cafe, you know, the little cafe yeah. show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great, with the interpreter. Yeah, with the interpreter, yes, with the interpreter. Yeah. yeah, it was super fun. So yeah, we've known each other for quite a long time. Yeah. And I'm always so happy to see you. You're like, you're amazing. I love your energy and your spirit. And you guys are gonna see why I love this guy so much. Uh, uh, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> we will, trust me. Uh, yeah. It's very easy. Uh, yeah. So let's start. I always start with stand up comedy. I know that you are now more into um, being a motivational person. No, you know. no stand up. I'm a but stand up. Stand up. We all do. We all like go different routes, but then we always stand up. It's like a whore you can't quit. <laughs> that's what? right that's right yeah you just can't like uh, what i like to do is um you know like i'm doing more like I, i'm doing more motivational empowerment speaking right for as far as like what i'm like money wise especially now with the covid but yes. what i like to do is test all my material and make sure that my material that i present at the empowerment workshops work on its own on the comedy end so, like, cause I don't want to be presenting the weak ass jokes, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, you have you know. to. I think even as as a writer, like if you write for a TV show, you have to try out some jokes because you don't really know. You know, people that write for late night shows sometimes go out and try out stuff at open mics. Yeah, you know, because you, you, you don't know. know. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know, and uh, yeah, that's great. So everything helps everything. Your writing, your comedy, uh, your personality, which is awesome, and. Um, first, I always ask people, how did you start stand up? What propelled you to do stand up? Um, I was doing musical theater and I got sick of it. Quite frankly, that's what it was. <laughs> I was one of those people that everybody hates. You know, those actors who go into uh, stand up comedy to boost their careers. I was <laughs> one of those. And like, I know, right? Aren't they annoying? That was me. That was me. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. But you're an amazing stand-up, so it really doesn't matter. I mean, Thank what you. your motivation is, you know, as, as long as you, you're an artist, so. I didn't start amazing. I was. Uh, oh, wait, who starts amazing, Aiden? No one starts amazing. Who yeah. suck in the beginning? <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the path. You have to suck and to get better. And if You if have we to don't suck work, so bad at the beginning. <laughs> so have you ever wanted to quit? You were like, that's it. I'm done with this shit. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was funny because uh, in the beginning, so I don't know how, what, what happened to you, but, um, if you, um, like it, it, in the beginning, I started in 2012, I took class also, and like, I'm like, uh, any, any comedians are watching, they're like, I fucking hate this guy because I started in a class and I was an actor. So that's two strikes. <laughs> that's two strikes, right? They hate yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And so I started in a class and, uh. I was like, I don't know. So I was doing like a show a month, maybe sometimes, not really. Mm -hmm. And after a year and a half, I had like five minutes. And they, yeah, like five, maybe 10 minutes. Because I was going up like once a month. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do this or not. You know? <laughs> and actually, Michael, what, I met him and he was like, I don't think you should quit. I think you should keep going. Because like, I was I was gonna quit. I was literally gonna quit at the um, middle of 2013. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, this this doesn't seem like it's panning out. Whatever. And then he was like, just keep going. So I kept going.
for like a year after that. And it was like June of 2014, I did a production of Music Man. Um, and it's this musical uh, in Berkeley. And when I did that, I saw my check and it was like $300 for the week for like eight shows. And I was like, okay, full time into stand up, which is kind of stupid because stand up, <laughs> there's not money there either. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, you can make in a week doing stand up, you, know, you can make more than 300. Yeah, you could. But that yeah. was like hard. That was hard. I was Harold Hill in the music band. And that was, I was on stage the whole time. It was so hard. And I got wow, $300. I and I'm 300. like, that's crazy. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I want to go full tilt into stand up and see what happens. So, that, so then I, that's when I started really, really, really started. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And we have Tanya here saying, no hate. You are not an actor trying to act like a comic. Many are. And it is sad. You're a superstar who is funny and an excellent comic. And I have you to agree. You know what's funny? Tanya was there at the signing show. She was. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. oh Tanya. I love Tanya. We She's so love nice. Tanya. She's the best. I love oh, her. Dearly. God, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank there you, you Tanya. Go. Yeah, yeah. She's all about the love. No hate with Tanya. We love her. Uh, so tell me, what was the best set you ever had and what was the worst set you ever had? The best that I ever had was um, at the Laugh Factory. So at the Laugh Factory, um, they had um, an Asian night, an all Asian night. And it was packed. Like they packed it. Like it was, the, the balcony was all packed. The, 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 the floor was all packed. was mm -hmm. packed. And after my set, I got like a standing ovation. It was it crushed so hard. It felt so good yeah. on a Friday night at the Laugh Factory to a full house. I was like, oh, this is it. This is so awesome. Yay, Yahoo. Um, That's great. And what was the worst <laughs> you ever had? Okay, so I had to do this roast for this drag queen named Gypsy. Um, <laughs> in, oh, it. God, this is so bad. Okay, so it was a roast, right? So, like, yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you know the older gays. Like, the older gays are, like, very older Palm... Picture older Palm Spring gays. So oh. they're like very proper, and they're like, oh, oh, my. Like, they were, like, you know, freaking corsages places, oh, you know, yeah. like, like in suits. And here I come, and I'm, like, the worst gay ever. I'm, like, I'm, look at me. Look, I'm the worst gay ever. And so I show I'm up. The worst game. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I'm wearing a football shirt. I don't even play football. That's okay? so funny. Yeah. I look like an Asian basketball player that I can't bounce balls. <laughs> only that way. So I, I can't do anything. So I show up thinking, like, in my head. because And then they, they, they were like, okay, like, can you be part of the roast? And the people on the lineup are like, the local business owners and, you know, like low level movie stars like Connie Stevens from Greece too, you know, like, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. uh, the gay kind of socialite. And I'm walking and thinking, all right, roast like comedy, co you know, like comedy store roast battle. Like, and uh -huh. they want to honor this 90 year old drag queen who's like the 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 heart of palm springs you know and all of these guys their roast like their roast is literally like i just want to say sometimes he gets clumsy <laughs> remember when your sparkle fell off your dress that one time you walked on stage <laughs> i just want to say i love you and i walk up there and i'm like you knocking on devil's door <laughs> you know i was like oh you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna you get gonna get for i was like railing him and i was and i was railing connie stevens i was like mm, like <laughs> oh my god you know, look at you hanging on for dear life and they, first of all, I was the youngest person in there, one. So they already hated me. And yes. two, that was not the flavor they were going for. I bombed so hard that after two minutes, I was reading the, the script. And I looked up and I was like, 
you guys, you know what? I'm Korean and I always finish what I start. And so whether or not you laugh, I have to finish this. It's another five minutes of jokes. So I'm just going to keep going. Like I had to do that. It was going so badly and everybody hated me. And now I go back there and I do other comedy shows and they're like, oh, you're actually funny because you bombed so hard. I just <laughs> the roast. And I'm like, oh. you're actually funny. You're actually, oh, you're actually funny. Oh, it's, it was a bad situation. It you was know, like a banquet hall room yeah. full of people who hated me so oh hard. Oh my God, I'm sorry. That sounds terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. But we have yeah, to nothing, go through it, right? Nothing worse than when everybody hates you in the room. Everyone. Everyone. E e every, you everyone. Can't that, person, that one person who likes you, because sometimes there's one. That, no, the only have... person that liked me was Michael and my friend Robin, who was sitting <laughs> way in the back, and they were laughing at the fact that nobody was <laughs> laughing at me, going, ha ha! And those <laughs> bitches, I ran my joke by them. I was like, look, are these jokes funny? And they were like, that's hilarious. But not for that room. Like, no. for the roast battle, but not for that room. And so it was, it was a gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. <laughs> and you know me, like, my comedy actually... Yeah. I probably shouldn't say this publicly, but I will. Like, you know, my whole likability thing, I kind of lean yeah. into it. Like, I try to relate to the audience, and that's how I, like, kind of, like, get the relatability thing. I don't, without any of that, it's like Aiden kind of, I don't know, you know. <laughs> a lot of it, Aiden, a lot of it is the audience connecting with us. And yeah. if they don't connect for whatever reason, then yeah. it's not going to happen. If We're your done. joke is great, right. No, no matter how great your jokes are, if, we, if we're not connecting with the audience, then if they hate you, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing. A, you just have to tell them that you're going to finish what you started. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was great that you handle it beautifully. Oh, well, yeah. So no worries about that. So I would like to get right into the book. Uh, I okay. read your book and I loved it. Um, I, I always loved your attitude. Where. I relate to your attitude um, in the sense that we can be, you know, sad about something, but we always try to make everything into a positive, not stupid happy. Like, hey, I'm always happy, but, you know, because we're not like, we have our moments, right? Oh, we have, yeah, we I had my moment things. earlier today. Yeah. Absolutely, of sadness or anger or whatever. And, uh, but we try to make everything into, and I think part of doing comedy is that it's make, making a positive out of pain, really. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, we make light of it. Um, so I'm going to actually show the promo. Let me, I'm, I'm one woman production. So okay. bear with me. Uh, let's see if I'm okay. I got it. Yeah. I'm getting better, Aiden. So oh. much better. Can you see your There's face there? Oh, wow. You actually pulled this. Great. I totally did it. Okay. So this is the promo for Aiden's book, you guys. And I love your promo. It's excellent. Oh, God. Absolutely. Thank you so much for checking out my book, The Art of Being Yay. Fun fact, the original title of the book was supposed to be called The Art of Being Gay, not The Art of Being Yay. But, you know, my team <laughs> thought it would be a good idea for me to change the title because they thought that it would be taken as my attempt to turn the world homosexual, <laughs> um, which I have no interest in doing. And I never try to turn straight people gay. You know, they always cry after <laughs> One thing is for sure, though, I am gay and I am yay AF. Because I am so gay and yay, people, when they see me, just assume that I had an easy life of privilege, like I was born to a couple of dentists in Orange County. But the truth is, I really had to fight hard for my Barbies, you guys, really. <laughs> I grew up in government housing in San Francisco, in my grandmother's government house that I wasn't allowed to be at, so I had to be quiet. Um, <laughs> and also, you know, I was undocumented, and then I got HIV when I was 19 years old, and then I lost a husband. So my life is like matching the drama level of that of a Lifetime TV movie. Producers of Lifetime, if you're seeing this, hire me. <laughs> this book, for 
for me documents my journey to the decision that I made to be more optimistic and more happy and really prioritize my emotional well-being above anything else. And it's dramatic, it's juicy, and it's empowering. It has tools uh, in the book that I have applied to my personal life um, to raise my vibration and to become a happier, more empowered person who represents authentic joy. And I do not skip the details on how I got there, okay? I spill the beans on my life from top to bottom. I have no secrets. It's uh, death, infidelity, <laughs> poverty. I've been there. And so I think you're going to have a really fun time reading about it, uh, just for the juicy factor, but also so that you can see how um, when certain principles, when applied, can actually work to improve uh, your life in the direction of more empowerment and positivity. So I will see you in the pages of the book, and I guarantee you, whatever the title may be, nobody turns gay from reading the book, okay? <laughs> Maybe Asian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, see you on the pages of the book. I love it. I love that I promo. You found that. That's embedded into my website. But I guess you like clicked into the link. Oh, I'm a researcher, baby. Oh, that's so funny. It's like unlisted. <laughs> unlisted. Oh, yeah. I'll find it. <laughs> oh, you found it. You found it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the Google queen. So, yes. Uh, so there's so much to talk about. Uh, I guess that you cover so much in your book. Um, so I have I have actually some quotes from the book that I loved. Um, oh wow! Really, thanks. Yeah, no, I read it. I read I, it. I can't believe book. that it's such a big book. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's not that <laughs> thick. I mean, like it's not. It's it's, not, pages. No. it's, it's over a hundred pages. Anything like that, I'm like. But you're a writer, oh. so that like it's it's easy for you. Yes, and I read really fast too. I do speed writing, like I mean, um, reading like yeah. really fast, and I catch. Oh, good. What's so important? Yeah. Two hours done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, you say yay is the best tool that I have discovered for getting everything I want from a practical standpoint: money, friendships, relationships, stuff. The magic that happened as I got steadily joyful was unbelievable. Yay is like a superpower. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, how did you discover this yay factor and why is it a superpower? Okay. So when I was a, a teenager, you know, the whole, um, what, you know, living <laughs> in my grandma's yeah. government apartment and when I got HIV because I couldn't go to college because it was undocumented, you know, all of that drama, um, I started studying empowerment because somebody heard about my story, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, and told her voice teacher this very great opera singer and he took me under his wing and gave me free classes and he also set me up with empowerment classes and so nice. I didn't have a college education but I went into the world of empowerment so I started studying like neuro-linguistic programming empowerment blah 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 mm. so I I started studying empowerment at 19 and I did that till I was like 33 and then Michael dies you know Michael um yes actually, I met him actually, has met Michael Right. What, what a sweet man. I, I'll yeah. never forget. I was at Tao Comedy and I had my knee was hurting a lot because I tore my meniscus. And he was so kind. He was like, you sit here. Like he was tired, but he stood up and offered me his seat because it was packed. Yeah. And I was like, what a sweet guy. I mean, just delightful, beautiful man. He's a great he's, he's he, he was a great guy and always will be my my sweetheart, you know. Um, and uh, he passed away from cancer. Uh, and, you know, when I was 33, that was a couple of years ago. And when he died, um, it literally, like up until that point, I was using empowerment to get things like make getting a show and getting money and da -da 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 -da, success. Da -da 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 -da. But like now, I was like so miserable. <laughs> I was like. It was, it was literally like this. It was like, if I'm going to stay alive, I can't stay feeling like this every day. I just can't do this. I would wake up in the morning and I'd be like, damn it, I'm still here. Oh. Damn it, I'm still here. And like, I was, I was really in love with him. Like, it was not like, th there was no real family support. It was mm -hmm. just he and I. And yeah. I remember I had a panic attack, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was like, I can't, I couldn't move. I, and so mm -hmm. I thought I was having a heart attack and literally I was like, I'm coming Mike. And then 
no. And I, and then I remember feeling disappointed. And I was like, wow. Oh, wow. So it was like serious. And then I watched Judge Judy and uh, and I, and this Judge Judy was railing at this Asian woman about, where are your papers? Why aren't you prepared? For the, why are the, what's going on with you? And the Asian woman was so scared. And I was like, that's my mom if I go because she has to deal with the documents and I'm not gonna go because my mom has to do that. Like, it's a true story. I was like- Oh, oh my God, like your mom saved your life. Yeah, and I hate the court system. So I would, to put her through that, it was so funny because at the time I wasn't really thinking straight, right? So like, yeah, of course, of course. it's funny what hits you at the time. I was like, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Uh, I would hate for my mom to have to go through the court system. Oh my so, God, that's not the grief, the court system. Yeah, not the grief, the court system. And so that I was like, is. all right, well, I'll stay. But then I made a deal. I was like, if I stay, I need to find a way to feel better than this because this is not happening. This is not going to be my reality. I can't. Yeah. So after I, I trial and dared a bunch of different ways and I made my singular goal to be happier, not mm -hmm. success, not money, not friendships, not relationships, just happy. How do I feel better? that became my goal so all of my empowerment tools went into feeling better uh when i did that that's when stuff really started happening and i was like it's first of all it, it very quickly like within like four or five months my my level shifted very very quickly um and when i actually did get there and felt authentically more confident, stronger, authentically more happy, trying to look in the direction of positive um, deliberately, I felt a sense of empowerment around my own emotions. And when you do that, people sense it. And when people sense that, they want to work with you. They want to be friends with you. They want to go on dates with you. They want to encourage you. They want to help you. Like, And I was like, this is yeah. cool. You, you, you know exactly what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yes, yes. And, I, I, and do you think there's a difference between being joyful, or having joy, and being happy? Is there a difference? Do I think that? Yeah. yeah I, I think happy, I think happy is a, so this is how I define happy for myself, actually. Okay. So I was like, I need to be happy. I'm like, what does happy mean? Mm -hmm. And so I, I define, but this is my own definition and it, it might not serve, but the criteria that I gave myself, because I'm very science-y, um, yes. uh, because of the neuro-linguistic programming, yeah, you know, I, I, was say, I yeah, yeah. tell people because I didn't tell people this all those years mm -hmm. because I didn't want people to think I was a weirdo, like, cause I'm like so into it. Right. I'm like all about, you know, and so, um, What's it called? So I defined happy as, okay, I want to be a happy person. What does that mean? Okay, there's a group of family of emotion that's considered positive and there's a family of emotion that's considered negative. Yeah. Somebody who is happy spends a majority of their time in, in the realm of positive emotions rather than the negative without forcing it. Right. That's not, that's not real. Like yeah. absolutely genuinely and it can be like satisfied, it can be happy, it can be relaxed, all of those things are positive. You mm -hmm. know, ones down here. It's actually interesting. The the differentiation is empowered versus disempowered. Like it's like when you feel empowered, mm -hmm. all of those things, like when you feel like you you you, you know when you feel yeah, when you feel empowered. It's like when you feel like you're, how do I say this? So all of the things on the negative end, right? Like yeah. powerless, it's powerlessness. Powerless, okay. Power, like anger, mm -hmm. frustration, um, even motivation. I gotta get motivated. All yeah. of that reaction against something that you perceive that you're powerless against. So you're railing. Mm-hmm or you're like sad or depressed or whatever. That's in the negative emotion family. 
the positive emotion family, you feel empowered. So you can be satisfied, you can be chill, you can be joyful, you can be excited or eager or whatever. So that's the differentiation I've found. I, I like that. And uh, I feel like sometimes we need to feel disempowered to and hit rock bottom to be able to empower ourselves. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and, and joy comes from within. So it's a choice. I think the difference is happiness. I think it's caused by other things. To me, and this is my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and what you call happy, I think, is joy. Joy is a state of being, and it's a choice. Yeah. You choose to be joyful. You call it happy, I call it joyful. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. So you're yeah. choosing the positive emotions. If you're sad, but I feel like whenever I'm sad about something, I need to let that flow. Now, when it becomes something where, you know, you've reached that point, maybe I need to start choosing, forcing myself to choose positive. Sometimes it's impossible to do it when you hit rock bottom. That's why I commend you for like, I can't, it, it's, it took incredible strength for you to do, to make that decision to like, screw it. I'm going to be happy and I'm going to choose happiness. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I mean, honestly, you know, we're talking very real right now. Yeah, and totally real. You know, if you choose the positive feelings before you get into that deep depression, some people yep. are unable to do it because it's a chemical imbalance. And I totally understand that. But if you have a sadness for a specific reason, like you had, and you hit that rock bottom, mm -hmm. if you choose the positive, do you think if you choose the positive feelings before you start going down quickly? Uh, that you can get yourself out of that depression faster than if you just hit bottom and like sometimes mm -hmm. most times so most times. It's, so like sometimes it's like sitting in traffic that's an easy one right so like you're that. sitting in traffic and you're like all right you feel that frustration you go feel that right there we don't want to do that so right right then you can kind of steer the ship a little bit and you know oh, I go, the book you know like what do you think you will have if you were not sitting in traffic oh peace comfort great now we've got to speak to ourselves in the peace and comforting terms to yes. to enroll that state in you you know so you're right absolutely um sometimes things just hit you so hard and you get knocked off but if you train yourself even when you do get knocked off you can mm -hmm. get back up quicker yeah I agree. Yeah. Uh, we're on the same page. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> sometimes also like when a, a loved one passed away for me, it's um, I, I just kind of like don't get it in the beginning and then it hits me. How, how did it hit you? Did it like you were in denial in the beginning? Did you go through the denial stage like you just didn't get what just happened when Michael um, passed? Kind of. Well, when he got diagnosed with cancer. Yeah in March, I was convinced that we could still save him. Of course, of course, but, you always have that, absolutely. But it had metastasized into his liver and lungs and bones and everything. It was everywhere, stomach, Pardon. it was everywhere. And I, if I have a regret about the way I handled the Michael situation is that I, if I had been able to be more balanced, I could have given him more comfortable ending as opposed to me going, Michael, we can fight this, Michael, we can fight this, and him also needing that hope, so he also wanted to. But I wouldn't have pushed them so hard. I pushed them pretty hard to try to get care and, you know, like, hey, like, we can do this. Take this holistic medicine, you, right. know, I, you know, use this medication that I got, you know, whatever. Um, to try to really fight it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that I wish I would have been softer with him. Well, I think you did the best you could do at that very moment. And you did an amazing job that I was just going to say, uh, as I was reading the book, I was crying. I was like, it just broke my heart. And the way you dealt with it, I'm like, wow, that is true love. Like That's like the strongest love that you can have for somebody like just oh thank you 
Yeah, I would have. I would have pretty much done anything, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I felt that. Yeah, you. At some point, you said if I could have cut my arm and sell it on eBay, I would do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's what love is. You know, you would do anything for the other person. Yeah. And you were, you just were amazing. You're a beautiful soul. And Ooh. that's one of the reasons I love you. So you did work when you were a teenager, right? Right, right. Um, so do you have any horror stories or any weird characters that you met? Sure. Um, one of the guys was a supervisor in San Francisco. And he is the most conservative of all the supervisors in San Francisco. This was back back when. And uh, he, very religious. So he would pick me up in his car and I don't know why he drives like this. He drives like 120 miles an hour. Oh my God. And he's like, uh, yeah, I, I took defensive driving courses. So he takes me to his house and he lives in the basement of his, um, a uh, home that he lives with his family. And he's like, you gotta be quiet. And there's like, you know, Mother Mary figures everywhere. He's very, very Catholic. Wow. And you know, we do it and, you know. In front of Mary? Get on your knees and prays. And I'm like, mm, well, you're already on your knees. So I guess that works. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's always the most conservative people that are the very most like they have fetishes that you would not even imagine it's always the conservative guys yeah like i was yeah. telling you my dating horror story it was a lawyer very conservative lawyer for everybody watching i have a dating story uh we were talking with aiden the guy uh dropped his pants and asked me if i wanted to touch him i'm not kidding and aiden is like did you touch him <laughs> well, but you did it right you did it no. no, the first question was when, when he, uh, you were like, oh, but was he hot? <laughs> and I was like, yes, but I'm, I wasn't, I'm not ready. What is you dropping your pants there? It's like, and, and then my second question was, oh, was it a good size? <laughs> no comment. And, was, so and my third question was, are you going to see him again? And what was your answer, Grace? <laughs> no, maybe. Maybe? <laughs> Well, let's put it that way. He's very assertive and he knows what he wants. So uh, I'm going to appreciate it. Hot, I mean, I think that's hot, but like it, there's a line, right? Well, it's, yeah. It's like, I said, no, do you want me to drop my pants? I was like, no. Do you want to see my manscaping? No, I don't want to see it. And he oh. freaking dropped his pants. Unbelievable. He gardened for you. That's love. I know. <laughs> he made it full out of himself. But yeah, I just, and he's very conservative. If you met him, you would never think that he would be like, yeah, so the same thing with the, do you have another story, like another conservative guy or somebody who would be like, a, like a priest no, or but, something? You know what's <laughs> very weird is after Michael died, you know, I go on these dates and any guy that I end up seeing more than twice ends up very specific being a business consultant between the ages of 40 and 45 with white boy names. Oh my God, that is so specific. I can't deal with that. We have a Bill, we have a Ryan, we have a Steve, we have a Joe. Do I have another one? Kyle. Kyle. Wow. A business consultant. Unbelievable. That's my type, and I don't know why. That is so specific and so weird, but yeah, and look at like, those names. It's like yeah, with those names, and that is so random. I love it. It's it's yeah. great. I made okay money. I mean, like mm -hmm. at the time, like two or three hundred dollars a session. It was not that bad. And also, there was a guy who actually he really liked me, and so he fancied himself as you know. Richard Gere and me being pretty woman. And so he gave me an envelope of $3,000, just like in Pretty Woman. And he was like, Can you stop doing this for a while. I'd like to just use you just for me. And so I was like, okay. And so for a while there, I just went with him. And that guy was so sweet to me. He was so Aww. like. He was sugar daddy. 
Yeah, I th- I yeah. wonder. What- I forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was so sweet. I loved him. I don't- I have no idea what his name is. Hilarious. Simple name. I think he was a business <laughs> consultant. <laughs> <laughs> 40 to 45 named Kyle, Steve. Yeah, I know. Uh, so so this leads to um, you getting uh, being HIV positive. I thought I was going to die alone. I was oh. like, I'm going to die alone. I'm like, And yeah. funnily enough, I still might die alone, right? <laughs> hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> I first, but, you know, I don't know. Who knows what's gonna happen with me? Uh, but um, but I, now I now I don't think that I'm gonna die alone as a result of HIV. Now if I die alone, I'm dying alone. But because it's, not- it's hard to date in LA, they, that's why. Yes, it is. It's very, I know mm-hmm. it's very hard to date in yeah. LA. Yeah, and I'm not the greatest. I'm not the most popular. Like I'm not like. I wish I were more in the scene, but I'm not like really in the scene. You know what I mean? Like, so like, I'm like, okay, well, <sighs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I, it's been a while since I've been to a brunch, you know, like, it's like, you know, there, there are certain types of gays and I'm just yeah. never, I'm just never one of the popular gays. <laughs> you know yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm not a popular woman. Cause I'm not a conventional woman. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm I like, get oh, it. Oh, I totally oh. get it. Yeah. Uh, so, it's harder. Yeah. It's harder when you're like but, that. But, yeah, but it's it's fun, you know. But yeah. I did think I'm gonna die alone when I got HIV. I was like, I'm gonna die alone. I'm gonna totally die alone. Of yeah. course. Well, and it's also I feel that you that was your thought because you felt alone. It's almost like when you get that kind of news, it's like, oh my god, you know, it's like a feeling of yeah. yeah, right? I felt very alone. Yeah. yeah. I was already very, very alone. Yep. What happened when you told your friends or your family about your your status? I didn't tell my family. You um, didn't. No, because what could they do? You know, and I was living with my grandma, and so I just didn't tell them. Uh, when I told my friends, I have a joke about it. I'm like, the reactions looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, oh, you're HIV positive. Oh no, no, you're. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay, right? You're not gonna die on me, are you? Don't die, Ada, don't die. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And then I have to be this one to support them and be like, um, they're there, <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like, I, and I, I, the thing is, like, I have a mama bear kind of nature, so like, I, I turn into like a Kentucky housewife real quick. Like, it's okay. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Everybody's gonna be fine. When the oh, Lord calls, we all have to go. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> we all have to go when the Lord calls. <laughs> so you had to uh, make your friends feel better. That's crazy. <laughs> what kind of friends do you have? They're, uh, they're great. They just love me. They love me. Know, well, it, we were all 19. So what I know. Want- you don't know any better. Of course. Yeah. Like yeah. death, you know, and and then HIV. No, it's it's. Uh, I I admire your uh, attitude towards life. You're amazing. Um, so let me see other things that I wanted to ask. I have so many questions. I don't think we have enough time. Um, okay. So then you talk in your book about feeling hopeless, right? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. When you were hopeless, what kind of behaviors did you um, exhibit as an and as a result of being hopeless? Uh, uh, oh, the uh, hopeless. Hopeless, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I was hopeless at different points in my life, right? So was there a point in particular where you were, were curious about? Um, well, I, I what I read was that your therapist, Mark, how he changed your attitude. How did he right. help you? And- oh, right, right, right. Um, so the hopeless... Uh, so I thought I was going to die alone. Yeah. And so I went to the therapist and he said, you could die alone, but also you don't, those guys down the hall have HIV and they, you know, are living great lives. And so, you know, and so then I went home and if, if I found out that if I Googled, you know, lonely people with HIV, I would get results for lonely people with HIV. And then if I went home and Googled people with HIV who who live wonderful lives, 
I would get the same results for that search. So it really depends on where you want to put your focus. And then I sat down and I started evidencing all of the, like, so, so the, the thing I have to do is pick which one serves me better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, which yeah. is going to be better moving forward? Is it going to be better for me to think people with HIV can have a great life? Or is it going to be better for me to think people with HIV are going to die alone? People with HIV have a good life. So let's evidence that, provide mm -hmm. evidence for that belief that I want to hold until that becomes my predominant belief. Because I, I walked in with I'm going to die alone being such a surety. But mm -hmm. knowing that either one is possible. And so the criteria for picking a new belief becomes which is going to serve you better moving forward rather than which is more true because they're oh, really it doesn't matter. Right. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. The doesn't truth matter. doesn't matter. It's about cho uh, choosing. It's also it's all about life is about choices. Really. If you think about yeah. it, some, even when things that are handed, you know, that happened like being HIV positive, you didn't choose that, but you choose how you deal with it. And yeah. so you sure. can go one way or the other. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, I read and I love this and I'm going to quote it. When I started making emotional well-being a priority, I was able to consistently and deliberately make choices that inspired positivity, emotional well-being. So how do you take care of yourself emotionally? What are the tools that you apply to raise your vibration? Okay. So it depends on, you know, the situation, but one tool that I really like is, um, the idea of that, you know, there's this idea that anything that you want, you want because there's an emotional payoff at the other end of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, uh, I might want, I don't know, I might want to not sit in traffic anymore. And it's because I think I'll have peace and calm at the other end of it. Or mm -hmm. I might want to go somewhere for vacation but it's that feeling of excitement that I'm looking for. So you have to distill it down to what is the emotional payoff at the other end, right? Because that's what we're ultimately going for. So, right. you know, in the moments where I missed Michael, you know, I, I, you know, there was one, one time where I lost this really big check and Michael was the money guy. And the, the check was gone and I was like, oh my God, Michael, what am I going to do? And I was like, wait, what would Michael provide you with if he were here? safety security mm -hmm. comfort and he would talk to me in the terms like baby it's got you know he has an old man voice you know <laughs> yeah, baby, okay we'll, we'll just uh, we'll just reorder a check it's not that big of a deal you know um and i would look at that and try to give myself the emotion because i can't bring michael back from the dead i can't you know do voodoo and bring him back. But I can give myself the emotional payoff on the other end of it and give, give it, teach that to myself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's one way. Also, when you have one situation, you can actually, there's several ways, different ways of looking at it. Like I, I write about this in my book also. I, I went to Palm Springs because I was like, you know, I, 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 that, that would be a place where Michael and I would get away. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I got this huge tick bite on my leg and I had to take myself into the ER because okay. I could be infected. Oh. Um, and so when I went in there, I started feeling upset. And this is where you meet, like, you know how you said like, oh, when you start to dip, you make a different decision. I started feeling, oh no. And then I was like, wait, actually I have health insurance and I came mm -hmm. here to take care of myself. And I'm doing a really great job of taking care of myself without Michael here, showing myself that I can do this. So this is something that's really positive that I, I'm really stepping up for myself in the way that Michael would have for me, but now he's not here. But if he saw me, he would be super proud. So that option is also true. So we lean into the option that's going to serve you moving forward, not the option that feels right. We have to be deliberate about which one is going to be better for her mental well-being moving forward. Yeah. So that's I what I was. Yeah. I love that. You guys need to get his book, The Art of Being Yay. It's a great read. I I loved it. It's it's on Amazon, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon or they can also get it on your website, right? If they go to Aiden AidenPark.com. Yeah, AidenPark.com slash book a Dan Park. Huh? And uh, join my mailing list. I do the uh, feel better newsletter that goes out every week. 
um, it has a video top about, you know, different topics and it's all designed to help people feel better. Totally. And you have also the Yale wellness show. Uh, can you, uh, let me show a clip, um, of that. Did I, uh, let me see, where's my screen. I'm going to show a clip of here. This is, this is it right here. Okay, yeah. This is a clip of, uh, one of your shows, the Yale, yay wellness shows, right? That you, people uh -huh. can book. People would, you know, kids in school, they would bully me. They'd be like, you know, uh, you're gay. And I couldn't say I was gay. So I was like, no, I'm not, you know, which was not believable. And uh, and so I get reputation at school as being like the funny guy. I won prom queen. Is that crazy? <laughs> I get this. You know what's cooler? The lesbian, there was a lesbian prom king. And now she is a firefighter, which is the most lesbian thing I can think of. <laughs> she has better luck with hoses than I do. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah. There's your blog. Um, you have a blog. Uh, I love the topics, happiness, hack for when you feel blah. So you're really helping uh, you know, people to, to choose positivity and to how to deal. You give people tools, which is really cool. Uh, and then you have your podcast right here, right? Yeah. Uh, happiness hack when you feel blah and all, all the same. So you have the same topics that you have on your blog, correct? Yes. Perfect. So which format do you want to listen to? <laughs> exactly. And that's great. That's very smart. So great. I, I love it. This this was so great. I, I loved catching up with you and, and Yay. Really and everything and and we have to uh, we have like all these comments that we're gonna uh reply to and and like and engage with uh the audience and okay. uh, buy his book the art of being yay amazon or his website adonpark.com listen to his podcast read his blog anything he's the super positive person one of the <laughs> most positive and awesome people on the planet so Anyway, uh, yeah, Tanya's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't you love Tanya? Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for being on the show, Aiden. You're amazing. Oh. And uh, we'll, we'll talk great. soon. You're awesome. Thank you, love. Bye. Okay. Love you. Bye. Love you.